And a very pleasant good afternoon. My name is uh, Paul Merka. I'm the uh, publisher of paulmerka.blogspot.com. Welcome to another edition of A Conversation With. Uh, before we get started, just a reminder that uh, all of our previous editions of A Conversation With are available here on the site or on our YouTube page. Also, don't forget that uh, if you have any comments about uh, any of our past uh, conversations, don't go ahead and leave a uh, comment by clicking on the post, the comment link on the bottom of the page on, as well as on our YouTube page. Uh, today, our conversation focuses on the voices of track and field here in the United States. There's a better than even chance that if you've been to a collegiate or a pro track meet or cross country meet here in the US, uh, you may have heard these uh, two gentlemen. I'm joined today by Mike J, who is well known as the voice of the Drake Relays uh, in Des Moines, Iowa, along with Dennis McNulty, who's the man behind the microphone, most notably at the uh, NCAA Cross Country Championships in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, one thing I can say about both of these guys is that they're very well respected in the uh, track and field community for their preparation, their attention to detail, as well as for their ability to tell the story, build up the, the moment, in the stadium and on the course. And every once in a while, they can bring out a nugget about an athlete that's uh, competing that the fan in the stands or on the course might not know, know about. Uh, Mike joins us uh, from his home in, in Tiffin, Iowa. And uh, Dennis joins us uh, from his home in Indianapolis. Uh, gentlemen, first of all, thank you for uh, coming on today. Uh, first. First of all, uh, I'm going to throw throw this uh, to you, Mike. Uh, you you just called your first meet since, uh, gosh, March uh, at the uh, Iowa Distance Classic uh, last night. Uh, talk about that. Well, as a, as a first time ever, the inaugural Iowa Distance Carnival, the, the high school and college tracks in Iowa, for the most part, 99.9% .9 are still locked up. You know, uh -huh. not even usable. Uh, but uh, uh, Humboldt, Iowa, uh, middle-sized town and school in, in the central part of the state, uh, jumped through a lot of hoops with the athletic associations and Department of Ed and Department of Health. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of moving parts, and there still are with all the COVID-19 rules and regulations. And, and uh, any, long story short, they got approval uh, for a one-day activity. And uh, we had a distance carnival last night, had uh, uh, obviously predominantly Iowa kids. We had a kid there from uh, Lacey, Washington. We had a half miler from South Dakota. Uh, we had Roisin Willis from uh, Stevens Point, Wisconsin, who's the top uh, prep in America right now, the 400 and the 800. She went 203 and a half wow. uh, indoors at Boston. And uh, uh, so it was, it was, uh, it was exciting. We had, uh, uh, 69 athletes, um, they accounted for 99 entries, and we had 63 new lifetime bests out of those kids. So they've been working hard, you know, hoping that there was going to be a state meet at some point. And uh, so it was good, you know, and most of them are kids that are training for cross, you know. But uh, we ran the 400, the 800, 15, 16, 3,032, uh, about two hours and 15 minutes. We had uh, about 250 people in the crowd, all practicing social distancing. Uh, the host did a great job of having that all organized and, and seating marked, et cetera. Um, it was good. It was just, uh, you know, it was a, a track fix uh, that'll hold us off for a little while. But the kids, you could tell they, they were ready to perform. And uh, it, it, was, it was a good night. It really, really was. It was, it was um, kind of strange, as you guys know, to just sit there and think, man, this is, it's been a long time time since we've seen this you know and uh so uh it was it was rewarding in, in that aspect that the kids got to get out there and, and and do something yeah yeah uh hey dennis uh, i wanted to ask you this you know, it's like uh, uh mike and i were talking uh, before you you came on uh uh what have you been doing uh from a from an announcing standpoint uh you know since uh, the pandemic went down you uh uh, you know, as I was telling Mike that the, uh, a couple of days ago when uh, they had the uh, Bislett games 
uh, online and uh, uh, Karsten Warholm uh, ran his uh, world best in the uh, 300 meters. What I did was I, I turned off the sound and I announced it uh, as if I, I were in the stadium. <laughs> Been any, well, doing anything like that at all or just to, just to keep yourself sharp? Yeah. Well, I, I have to confess, and, and, uh -huh. and my wife will testify this, I announce everything. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we played 18 holes of golf this morning. We, we live right by a golf course, and so my part-time jobs work there. <laughs> I'm announcing my approach shot, my putt, <laughs> her putt, <laughs> and so yeah. forth. Um, but uh, what I do is I do an extensive amount of research. And uh, I think, Paul, you've asked me about this yeah. before. I have an Excel database of about 5,000 NCAA Division I athletes. And being a, on a spreadsheet, I can divide that by hurdlers, high jumpers, cross-country kids, sprinters, jumpers, pole vaulters, whatever they need you know, to be. I've been able to go through and glean and comb those files update them, move some students over to what I consider grads. They're out of eligibility. Uh -huh. um, you just you know, fancy it up. And that's, you know, that, that's filled a lot of dead time, which kept my brain alive. But insofar as working the pipes, man, I miss that, you know, getting, uh, um, it's so fun. And you mentioned this in your opening and, and uh, Mike does it a great job. He's kind of my idol. Um, when we get a, a young lady or a young man in a race or we're doing the intros of that lineup, there's something special. Uh, maybe a nearby hometown link uh, collegiately. And, and depending upon the meet, sometimes you can't do that if it's a title or a championship meet. But sometimes you can, uh -huh. particularly if this young, young lady or young man is a road scholar, for example. So you say something like Ken Lane 3 the defending conference champion, a Rhodes Scholar. Once you say Rhodes Scholar, if mom or dad is in the stands, game yeah. over. Yeah. And, and the other parents are going, oh, that person's unique. So that's what I've been doing, you know, is just trying to find nuances, uh, comb the big tens, and, and they were able, and a lot of the conferences announced, they're all conference teams, they're academic teams, uh, they're, they're like Big Ten does a distinguished scholar, that's in, in – in, you look at some of the majors of these kids, it just blows your mind. You know, uh -huh. what they, they, like, how do they get so smart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess a question I want to ask uh, both of you, how'd you get started in the business? I know that uh, I got, got in completely by accident. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I, the, in the uh, first year that the uh, the Dempsey opened, I'm sitting up up on the crow's nest, and Mike, uh, you know the crow's nest very well. Uh, and uh, you know, I I'm uh, David Bozzi, who was on the who's the uh, who's Greg Metcalf's assistant uh, distance coach at the time was doing the announcing and I'm sitting with uh, Brian Beakey, who is the uh, uh, SID at the time for track at the UW. And, uh, you know, we're just, because uh, I had, I happened to have an athlete in the meet and, uh, you know, we're just sitting around, sitting around. And then, uh, you know, David had to, uh, had to leave uh, to, to actually do some coaching and threw, threw me to Mike. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, okay. And then uh, I, I guess I did decently enough that, uh, you know, they, uh, I got, got to do it. So uh, how, how'd you guys get started? I'll, I'll start with uh, Mike. Well, I was a uh, high school coach and, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, had home meets and uh, you know, and just like what we were talking about earlier, so whoever was the announcer was somebody who was on the duty roster and that was uh, their duty for the night. And it, some of them, it may have been their first track meet they'd ever gone to. So uh, uh, I started announcing our home meets and then uh, some of the schools that were there would invited me to do their meets and then uh, just got lucky and uh, 
started doing meets at the University of Iowa. And, and, you know, it's like a lot of things in life is being at the right place at the right time and networking with the right people. And uh, so I, I just, I've been lucky, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I, I stay very, very busy uh, with announcing. That's what I, I, I do now for a living. And, and uh, I'm fortunate I've never had to ask anybody for a job. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's been a great ride thus far. But, you know, like I said, it's just, uh, I was given an opportunity, uh, much like you, Paul, when I, I was coaching and, and we needed somebody and, and then it just continued to grow from there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Dennis, uh, if I recall, uh, you coached uh, at the high school level in Indiana, correct? And I'm going to assume that's kind of how you got started? Well, for, you know, first off, I was an athlete. Yeah. And, and ran through high school and college. Yeah. And it, it, it's ironic because I don't remember one time anything an announcer said as a high school athlete or as a collegiate athlete in track or in cross country. I might have been, guess I'm a nerd. Yeah. Uh, the same, you know, I, and, and I became kind of a, a journeyman distance runner, ran Boston a couple of times and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Right out of college, um, I began my teaching career, teaching high school science and, and coaching you know, like you did back in the early 70s, coaching about everything and driving the bus and so forth. Um, but my, um, one of my professors in college, all of the, all the education majors, he said, are any of you going to be coaches? And so about 10 hands went up in the, in the room and said, hey, Ron, what are you going to coach? He said, I'm going to coach baseball. He said, Ron, get your umpire's license. And so he got around to me and he said, Mac, what are you going to, what, what are you going to coach? I said, well, I'm going to coach cross country and track. And uh, he said, get your referee's license. And so I did. And so I started working right out of college at high school track meets when I had spare time. Um, college meets, local road races, whatever it was needed. And, you know, anything from catching a javelin, raking the sand, <laughs> and timer, whatever you needed. And um, so I worked and worked and worked. Well, about six years after I got out of high school, or out of college rather, and I'm, I'm coaching now and life's going good and had a couple of teams in the state meet and blah, blah, and learning all the events as a head coach has to do. Mike, you can appreciate that. You know, you might have your one favorite event, but you got to learn them all. Yep. Um, we, uh, I, I had a mentor named Marshall Goss and, and Marshall was a coordinator of officials. The year was 1982. We brought to Indianapolis the National Sports Festival and Marshall said we need certified officials. And so I took my officials exam and, and um, I ended up becoming a master official right off the bat. And so I worked a lot of track meets and I did, again, anything from whatever they needed. Uh, this was before the era of cell phones and, and a lot of emails and all this stuff. Sometimes you pick the phone up, sometimes you're lucky enough to get a schedule in the mail. You just showed up and did what they needed to do. Uh, I directed the state games in the state of Indiana in 1982 work my tail off, you know, teaching, coaching, and doing all these other things. Uh, I also was part owner of a running shop selling, you know, running shoes as well, part-time, so I rarely slept. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, um, right after the 84 Olympics, I was one of the official competition officials there, and uh, then the following winter, I go up to Purdue on a Friday night, my friend Mike Payline's there, and it's the same deal, you know, you grab your two sons, you get in the car, your practice is over. They're all excited because they can run around and play. Uh, they were in elementary school and I didn't know what I was going to do. Whether I was going to rake the long jump, be a timer at the finish line. I just showed up. And so Mike Payline, he said, uh, have you ever announced a track meet? No. <laughs> Here's the clipboard. Here's the microphone. Good luck. And uh, honestly, that's exactly how I started. Uh, I, re I remember Notre Dame was at that meet. Uh, I remember Raghib Ismail, Rocket Ismail, was uh, uh -huh. sprinting the team in that meet. And so I, I kind of set the stage, and I just knew this guy was an amazing football athlete and didn't know a whole lot about his track background, other than I knew most of the collegians competing just because I was a geek track fan. Yeah. And, uh, so next thing you know, you know, the phone starts ringing, and, and um, you get invited to help and so forth. I think it wasn't long after that, Mike and I ran into each other for the first time in a meet, uh, the U.S. Nationals, uh, USA Track and Field Nationals. It may still have been TAC at that time, uh -huh. uh, downtown Indianapolis. And I was just a spotter helping because you had, you know, Gary Hill from Track and Field News, Bob right. Hurt, 
from New York, and and those guys uh, uh, were, were to me was like holy cow! I'm really learning from some you know some amazing guys there. And I, I did notice that they they did some nomenclature, studying their athletes and knowledge of it. So I was a quick learner, saying okay. You know, it, it, you can see like a coach with three eyes, so you can see every event going on, but uh, you need to do your athletic research. And so I think that having those uh, the people ahead of me as mentors yep. and, and watching Mike's uh, great workout in, in Iowa at the Drake Relays and all the things he does, and, and he's got a voice that sounds like God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, well, not that, but it, it, Mike, you have good pipes. And so- Thank you. That, I, you know, is kind of my beginning. And so as I ran that parallel coaching career for 38 years at Warren Central High School and had a monster track program with 125 boys and, and all that, uh, I also maintained uh, an announcing career and so forth, kind of as a side. So as I retired from coaching six years ago, yeah. now it's been just announcing and being a retired guy. Yep, man, must must be awesome. Um, I guess during during a, a normal you know, uh, a normal spring, how many meets uh, uh, do you guys do? I assume you you know both of you do do the whole range from high school uh, on up to a professional. Yeah, um, kind of indoor and outdoor. Uh, yep. I'll do, I'll do, uh, I'll do 30 meets uh -huh. yep. and maybe a dozen in cross country. Yep. And uh, what about you, Dennis? I'm a little bit less. Uh, I do a, um, a lot of college meets in yep. a calendar year. I'll probably do close to, well, I suppose Mike, I guess by the time I count road racing and other events mm -hmm. in there, I I'm probably about 50 events a year. Uh, if my local high school where I retired from, if they need somebody to help, sometimes I'll announce. But if they've got a guy um, that has that their assigned duty to be the announcer, I kind of step back out of the way and say, you know what, I'll, Absolutely. Do, I'll yeah. do whatever they need and, uh, and so forth. So, yeah, if my high school calls me to need some help, yeah, I'm going to be there because that's a program that, you know, I develop. And yep. I did. So, yeah, yeah. And I'll do other events. And, and, and you, you find – and Mike, maybe you've done this too. Uh, I get phone calls to do other civic events. Uh, I've emceed uh, a lot of things. One of the things we have in the city of Indianapolis uh, annually is a convention of firefighters. They come from all over the world. They have conferences, meetings, and things like that. And they have annual competitions uh, they do. They pull fire trucks down the street and they you know, go for time. I've had a blast announcing those events just make them feel great and fun welcome to our city and you try to sell whatever event it is because to sure. the people there watching and the people involved it's huge it's important yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um you know this year with the the pandemic i think i did about uh 16 or 18 virtual iowa high school awards banquets coaches would send me the uh uh scripts on the athletes then uh i would announce them and then they would put them together with a slideshow or whatever so you know because they you know couldn't have a banquet you know so they they did it via facebook or youtube or whatever the case may be so uh did a lot of that just to, just to help kids and coaches you know and try to uh, whatever they needed you know i i could i that i could provide uh, i i did that i was i was shocked as uh as many as uh requests it was like wow this you know takes a lot of time, you know, and, and, but good. It was, I mean, well worth it. It was fun. It was, it was good to do, but, but yeah, there's a lot of things, uh, you know, you can get involved with locally, you know, to, uh, uh, to help out. And it's like anything else, Dennis, as you know, if you're going to do that, it's not a lot different than getting ready for a track. You've got to be prepared. You've got to do yeah. some research. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go up there to announce, uh, some type of event and know absolutely, even if it's your first time there, you've got to know what's going on. Those people have poured their heart and soul into making this a success, and they bring you in to announce it, and you act like you have no clue what's <laughs> going on. That's, 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 that's not good for anybody, but yeah. it happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So they bring you in to think, well, maybe this, this guy's he, he's good. He'll know what's going on. So you've got, to, you've got to do some research on those as well. Yeah, I, um, I got a call. This was in, in February. I was coming back um, 
right before we did the indoor conference, super conference weekend, the weekend prior from that, I'm coming back from Mexico on a church mission trip. As soon as we get back in the United States, my phone lights up. I get a phone call asking me to be an announcer, an announcer at a wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, and, and first I knew the young lady. I thought, okay, this, this will be fun. And I said, yes, and we get, you know, and this was to have been in August. And since, you know, the pandemic, it's, it's gone away. And I'm not certain they're going to have a formal wedding now or do something different. But I thought, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to have, I didn't want to be the pastor, but yeah, I needed to know, okay, who am I announcing? What am I announcing? What are their backgrounds? Because that's an important event for somebody. Yeah. You know, weddings is kind of like the yeah. games for, for yeah, the weddings are fun to do. You just, you know, you got to do, you know, so I've, I've done a few of them and I just asked for uh, not necessarily track and field details, but you know, just ask a little dirt on every one of them, you know, to, uh, but yeah, yep, it's, uh, yeah. yeah, there, there's always something out there to do. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, you know, I hear you guys uh, talk, talking about the, the you know the uh, importance of uh, knowing what you're talking about uh, going into an event. Uh, my next question was, uh, what's the process for say preparing for a big invitational meet? Uh, I I am going you know I know you know you guys. Have, there's a better than even chance that uh, you may have seen some people uh, at meets that you've worked at before, but uh, uh, from the time you get the entries from that meet director, you know, uh, what's the process? How, you know, how long does it take for you to uh, feel like uh, you you've got it down. Well, I don't know if you ever feel like you really have it down. Yeah, you're always yeah. you're always uh, yeah. polishing it a little bit, you know. But yeah. it depends on the size of the meet, you know. Yeah. If it's a um, an early season invitational where you, I mean, you could have fifty people in the two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you try to I try to find uh, that fine line where I'm going to prep everybody from this point up and nobody from this point down. Right. And uh, uh, you just don't have, you don't have, you don't have time to do that many. There was a time when I tried to, and you stay up till five o'clock in the morning to do that, but those days are over. So yeah. you try to make that dividing line. You know, if it's a if conference championship meet yeah. are much, much easier, I think, than anything else, because you've got uh, the same people indoor, outdoor and cross country, you know? Right. Um, so once you get those sheets, Depending, it all depends on the size of the meet, how much time it's going to take, and how much you know you're, uh, you know, are you doing all the events, or are you doing just one gender, or are you just doing running, or are you just doing field? But uh, uh, it really can be as much time as you want to put into it. How good do you want to be? How much? How do? How well do you want to educate the crowd? Um, much of the stuff that you uh, prep for, you don't use. You don't uh -huh. have the opportunity. But I always like to have way too much. Yeah. In case there's a false start, you know, or a weather delay or, or whatever the case may be that you might need to uh, uh, fill in some time. And uh, so, you know, people ask that all the time. How long does it take? to? Well, it just, it just varies. I mean, it's hard right. to put a, but I just say hours, you know, yeah. it could be, it, it could be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I want to echo and, and, and ditto everything Mike just said and, yeah. and it varies. Uh, when I'm doing a, a competition and depends, is, is it a title meet like a, a conference championship or uh -huh. something of that, that nature? There's a protocol. Uh, conferences such as the Big Ten. I work with the American Athletic um, Conference, which is the old Big East. It started that in 1996. And so you get the continuity from one season to the next, from cross, indoors to out. And uh, so it's pretty easy to say, you know, and leading is our cross country champion. And currently in second place is last year's runner up in the 10. And, uh, and those are things that you know. Uh, with the American, I keep a separate database. And so that I know those athletes. And so I have, you know, and, and with those results within that conference, I have their citations. 
uh, you know, so and so Paul Merco was fourth a year ago in this event, and here he is, this, you know, the uh, the academic, you know, all conference student athlete back again, and and it, it depends on how quick you can shoehorn in. Yeah. If you have eight in a lane, if they're doing a good meet on time, on tempo, coordinating with the stream or the TV, yeah. Uh, general rule of thumb: if that gun is at eleven fifty. At 11.48, you start introductions, and of course, you try to look down and make certain that the starting line clerk has them there, and they're standing by their blocks and such of that nature, and you have time to give uh, uh, due diligence to each of those eight student athletes in a race, and be off the mic and put the microphone down 60 seconds before the gun. I have an absolute cardinal rule, and, and this every announcer should live and die by this rule, when the gun's up, you put the microphone down. Yep. And unless it's a nuclear holocaust that's going to happen and I have to announce an emergency, that microphone oftentimes is not in my hands. And uh -huh. when I do the NCAAs in cross country in a large cross country meet, yeah, I know that there's the 100, 200 meter recall. So as soon as they fire the gun, you don't start yakking, yakking, yakking. You let them get away just in case there is a recall that, you know, 250 runner starting field, heaven forbid, but there have been, and we've all seen those. Yeah. And so some things, you know, announcers, they tend to talk over a, a starter and, and the, the uh, fair and safe start of a race is, is huge. Um, same in an 800, for example, you got to allow those athletes to get around the turn, then to fire the gun, but there could be a recall 70 meters in. And so, you know, I want to make certain that it is a fair and safe start. And that goes back to, you know, well, I'm, I've been an official and I've been that starter before and, uh, and, and I've been the athlete. And so you don't want to hear, you know, blah, blah, blah on the PA uh, if you need to hear the recall gun. So little, little things I, I live and die for and, and so forth. But uh, as Mike said, research, research, research. I had the honor one time of meeting Dick Enberg. Uh-huh. And they go, here I am, you know, kind of, uh, 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 yeah, pleased to meet you. And, and like, you know, some guy from the Midwest, like I am. And uh, he, he said, you know, it, it's, he said, you got, and he paid me a compliment. He said, you know, you have a nice voice. And I said, well, you got to hear Mike J. <laughs> and, um, but uh, Dick's, his, I asked him, I said, you know, is there one thing, you know, you can give me as an advice or, or, cause I mean, you're like Dick Enberg. And he said, prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh -huh. He said, you may never use these two hour basketball game and I'll spend, you know, and the people, of course, in his level, he's got people doing research for, you know, for him, right. but you're still, you're going over those lineups, you're going over the kids and things of that nature, and you may never use it. And I've got, you know, stuff on a lot of student athletes, you know, their hometowns and so forth uh, that, you know, I may never use. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You, you never know. know. Yeah. And I always tell, you know, if I have it and don't use it, that's fine. But if I don't have it and I need it, that's that's not fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like um, you know, I'm sure everybody's caught themselves, uh, you know, s scrambling mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of a race if uh, s something uh, something superlative uh, just happened. I mean, uh, you know, I'll, I'll call myself out on this. Uh, at the 2011 Pac-10 Championships in Tucson, uh, English Gardner runs an American junior record in the 100. Mm -hmm. It took me about two or three minutes uh, to say af afterwards, because I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. And I was, uh, you know, I've got the microphone and I I've got it like this. Uh, and I'm going, where's Greg Walker? Where's Greg Walker? The, uh, or, you know, I'm looking for the Oregon SID just to confirm what I, what I thought I just saw, that that was a, an American uh, junior record. In fact, you know, that's the first, that was the first American record of any kind that I'd, I'd announced, and I blew it. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you're better off, you're better off yeah. being two or three minutes late with the correct information yeah. and thinking you're right, giving the information and going back in two or three minutes to apologize and say I was wrong. Yeah. Right. 
Absolutely. What I've done in those situations, and I, I've had a collegiate record before and, and things like that, is, and, but I didn't know for sure. And I'm looking for verification, you know, verification. I've got my iPad. I'm, you know, searching around. I'm hoping some SID comes through the back door and says, you know, don't do it. And what I do is, is you don't lose the, you don't want to lose the moment. Right. And, and we're all savvy enough. You are, and I know Mike is and so forth that you saw something really special. You saw something that was pretty close. And so those are things you can tell the, the, the crowd right there and then. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was one of the most you know, outstanding performances in American junior track history. I'm going to check. I think we may have something very special. As soon as I check, I'll be back with you. And that way you, you, you let the people in almost a teaser. Yeah. Uh, in, in the business and, and so forth, but let the people know that they saw something very special and you don't have to come back five minutes later when, you know, they're out getting popcorn or they forgot the moment anyway, because we do live in a world of sound bites. Yeah. But if you, you let them know that you just saw something very special and sometimes they'll do that. And, uh, and, and if there is no admission and you got to see that for free, ladies and gentlemen, or, you know, little things like that. And I said, now I'm going to check. I've got a few fact finders or whatever. And that in this day and age, fact checking is kind of a trendy hip thing to say. And so let me fact check that, ladies and gentlemen, be right back with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, I think that uh, I did the uh, the desert heat meet in Tucson mm -hmm. a couple couple of years ago when uh, Michael Saruni from uh, UTEP uh, yeah. broke the uh, collegiate record. And, uh, you know, I, I knew it was, I knew it was a, uh, a facility record. I knew it was the uh, fastest time in the NCAA, but I wasn't sure that that was a uh, collegiate record. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was able to rattle off. That's a new facility record. Uh, that's an, that's the fastest time in the NCAA this season. I'm going to, uh, we, we think you may have seen something special. I'll mm -hmm. check you know, then I guess, you know, that's the best way to cover yourself. And of course, you know, in a meet like that, uh, you don't, uh, you know, I had the uh, Arizona SID sitting with me, but, you know, uh, he's got, a, his priority was, uh, you know, he's got to take, you know, he's watch, he's scribbling notes on his guys because I, you know, his guys were third and and fourth in that race and so you know i i'm frantically thumbing my uh, ipad just to make make sure uh that that was uh, a collegiate record uh and you know i was able to get it out uh, within uh two minutes after i i i said uh what i said about the uh uh facility record and the uh, fastest time in the NCAA, so yeah. In, yeah. in the in the beginning, before there was the iPad, before TFERS and and yeah. all the things we have, because you've even asked me before. I've sent pictures, and you said, you know, what's that database or whatever? Because you know, and and Mike and I worked side by side. I think what in nineteen at the indoor meet, and Mike's seen, you know, I've I've got my iPad, I've got my computer database, uh, whatever computer instant results is. Uh, that right. is about the timing company, et cetera. I, I feel like I'm in a command module, but in the old days we had a microphone and, and uh, the, uh, the paper lineups and you had three ring binders of just notes and information. And uh -huh. you had guides from the different colleges and schools. Uh, you had your track and field news lists and uh, <laughs> you, were, you, you were flying by the seat of your pants, but it, mm -hmm. it, retrieval of the information is still pretty quick, but you love that expert that's in, in next door over with the SIDs and so forth, just to verify. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, which kind of leads me to the next question, uh, like uh, for the Drake relays or the NCAA uh, championships or, or, or conference championships, uh, how many people do you uh, usually have sitting with you? I assume you guys, have a spotter uh, and you know a guy that whose job it is to uh, thumb through uh, whatever uh, media guides or whatever. Well, usually, usually it's too many. You know, a yeah. lot of people like to hang out in the 
in the PA booth for whatever reason. I never did understand that, but yeah, um, and be loud. But uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I try to do it with, with the minimum, so you don't have to rely on anybody. You know, yeah. but uh, uh, you know, if you got two announcers working together, one yeah. spots for the other one. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, and that helped. You know, with the with uh, uh, the timing companies out there, you know, many of them you get splits. Uh, so you don't have to do those by, by hand. Um, but for, you know, it all depends. And it, it is the, is the meat on TV, you know, yes. um, do they have a video board that has to be directed? So, uh, uh, you know, you may, there may be a person there with a headset on talking to somebody that's running the video board. Um, then they relay information to you. Um, so, you know, it can vary from uh, nobody, but yourself yeah. or nobody, but you and your, and your fellow announcer up to, you know, two or three people. It, 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 you know, it comes to where it, it really is, what kind of, of a production is this school or entity putting on? You know, are there videos going up on the video board uh, that you have to be aware of to call people's attention to? Are they doing live results with the somebody, or I mean, awards uh, immediately after the event? So you throw it down to somebody to do the awards. Are you doing the awards? Um, you know, and I don't, there's a lot of moving parts, as you guys know, and I'm not yeah. sure everybody knows and appreciates that, but, uh, uh, and it varies from, from host to host, but, uh, it can be anywhere from none to a handful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's something I've had meets where I, I've, I've been the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in some of the most amazing locations, I've leaned out literally of a, from a parking garage. They said a little platform. Uh, took some cones and marked off a couple parking spots and the track was right behind the parking garage. And so that's your announcing <laughs> location. And, and so you're leaning out of a parking garage, hoping it'll fall over and you're a one man band. You're doing it all. And um, hopefully the guy is going to hit play somewhere when you introduce the national anthem and stuff like that. <laughs> and, and I've had that all the way up to uh, as you know, Mike just said, where you know you're there at the table with the microphone, and then you, you know, I, I call them uh, like the the, the cardinals uh, uh, that they have in Rome. They're standing right behind me, and I feel like you know they're going to second guess and, and in my ear try to say everything that uh, and correct me. And like Mike said, I just wish they'd be quiet. Yeah. And yeah. if there is a dead microphone time, then they can maybe tap you on the shoulder and say, Hey, don't forget this and that. Great, thanks. But you know, oftentimes when you're trying to introduce or with a flow of something and someone's trying to, you know, talk in your ear, uh, especially if you're going live and you got a producer in your, your earpiece, yeah. you don't need to hear another voice. Um, Mike and I did, uh, and, and we danced, I, I think, fairly well at the NCAA Indoor Championships. And we we trade off and it was almost like we didn't even have to, and now Mike, back to you, we didn't have to throw to each other. We just kind of knew. And uh, that worked well. We didn't have a lot of second guessers in, in, in our ears. Uh, we had an announcer for the awards, if I'm not mistaken, or, or at least saw an organizer, and they'd throw to us. And so that worked out really well. But uh -huh. sometimes you can get too many people in that booth, and it is a popular place to hang out if you're a, you know, a, a track nut like I am or so forth. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, with the NCAAs and cross country, I've been very blessed to have some very good spotters. Uh, they get the radio, they work, they know to keep the radio in their earpiece and so forth. So you don't hear radio chatter in the background. Ambient noise sometimes is just murder when you're trying to do the public address. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. You know, it's like, uh, I, I know like, uh, you know, in the years that uh, uh, I would been fortunate enough to, to work with Mike when, when uh, he'd come up uh, to uh, Seattle to do uh, the indoor meets, you know, uh, I've, uh, I've, I've been doing, I was uh, doing a lot of the field events. So, you know, I, I'm roaming, you know, at, at the same time, I'm watching the, uh, the big video board because, you know, we know that there, there's a, there's a race going on. Uh, and then, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, we've had uh, meets where we've, had you know the likes of a you know Shalane Flanagan or you know mm -hmm. you know Olympic medalist uh, sh showing up at the meet and you know I I can I can see w where Mike is uh, 
and you know he can see where I am, and uh, if he knows uh, I've I've got an athlete, he'll uh, uh, you know throw it throw it to me, and uh, we'll, we'll do I'll do a, mm -hmm. a qu quick uh, interview with the uh, uh, with that athlete, and then you know get back to, get back to the race. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, and it's uh, yeah. Uh, um, if, you, if you're working, if there's more than one of you, if you're, yeah. you're not doing it solo yeah. and you have a partner that uh, doesn't work well with others, it can make for, makes for a long weekend. But, but that hasn't, you know, that doesn't happen very often. Um, everybody's usually pretty congenial and yeah. uh, you just, uh, you do your thing, you know, and, and you have to trust everybody that they know what they're doing and, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it flows very well. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to get to uh, uh you know, we we didn't get a chance to touch much on it, but uh, like a, you know, I want to talk about the cross country. I mean, you know, especially when you have, you know, like an NCAA championship or you know a a meet like uh, uh, a big big meet like a uh, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, what is generally the timeline before the gun? You know, how much time do you guys have? Uh, to talk about the teams before the race, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll start with uh, with you, Mike. You know, uh, you know since I, I know you you did the uh, you do the uh, Wisconsin. Well, you know it. it uh, you know the box like assignments. The, you know, yeah. you introduce them by box assignment. Uh, I always meet with the starter beforehand to find uh -huh. out uh, if, if there isn't a script, find out uh, when they're going to, they'll usually fire a gun 10 minutes out, you know, right. start with 30 and then go 10 and five. And, and then um, two minutes out, I'm done. That, that way they can uh, give them the final instruction. So in there, you know, I, I, I read box assignments uh, in that time period, usually from 10 minutes out. And uh, that way, I want to make sure that I'm done uh, well in advance of of, uh, of them giving final instructions. Yeah. Because uh, the starter for a cross big cross country invitational is yeah. usually well out in front uh, of those athletes, and uh, so they want to make sure that they understand the the hand signals they're going to give them and the final instructions and that type of thing. But you know, cross country, uh, and, unless somebody tells you different, and I've never had that. I don't know about you, Dennis, but you, you've got all the time in the world to introduce them. And you don't, you don't want to do it a half hour early, but, yeah. uh, you know, depending on how many boxes there are, you know, allow yourself 10 minutes, maybe 12 and, and go through those box assignments and just make sure you're done a couple minutes ahead of time. So that starter can, and, you know, turn it over to the starter. Uh, I like to make that announcement so they know it's, it's their show and, and, uh, and they take it and run with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I do, uh, and I've done, I think, 17 or 18 of the NCAA championships, and so when, when John McNichols at Terre Haute, when I did my first one, uh, had, which I, which I really enjoy, is called a run of show, and uh, you know the first gun is at, at 11 a.m., and it, it literally has on my announcements from the time I'm in the PA booth at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, giving parking instructions, and you sit yeah. there and do nothing for 30 minutes, and then you have all officials report, and yeah. so you do all the protocol announcements, and just as Mike said, uh, when you get to that last 30 minutes, and, and there's a 30-minute gun, a 20, and so forth, depending upon the rules, if not, you announce the official course time is at 1030. Our first race, remember, is the women's championships at exactly 11 o'clock, be advised and and there are some special instructions some meets they report just straight to the starting line yeah. some there there is a declarations tent they have to report turned in timing chips and things of that nature and so forth if it's cross-country championships uh or any, any type of conference meet or major invitational i generally like to be there the day before uh -huh. and in some cases two days before with the ncaa's their races are on saturday uh i'm there wednesday sometimes thursday before, so it's um, one of the things I do is um, I try to go around the course. Uh -huh. I either jogging it, and I still am able to jog very slow. But yeah. in that way, I, I'm familiar 
with where they're, they're running, kind of making myself familiar where the medical tents are, just the lay of the land. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, if it's a, a conference or a title meet, uh, they'll have a technical meeting the day before. Yep. So I try to go to those technical meetings and just listen. Uh, ask sometimes if uh, I can get pronunciations. Yep. Uh, ask some of the coaches, hey, I got a kid here and I know how to say this name, but I don't think I know how to say this name. And you want to say it correctly. Yep. And uh, I do that when they do declarations at the NCAA championships in cross country. I actually have a table and a station. They'll come by me and um, fact check. You know, by then I've had all the, the team's accomplishments because, you know, I've, I've, Walt Murphy's made it available and I've been able to follow all the uh, everything on TFER. So I'll know that, you know, the University of Iowa were the Big Ten runners up. They won this invitational, that invitational, and the head coach is so and so in his, you know, 33rd yep. year. Yep. So being there early helps uh, the day of the meet. Again, if that first gun is at 11 o'clock in the morning, generally I'm in the booth ready to go at nine, two hours before. Yep. Uh, I just like to kind of get set up and run mic checks and so forth. Uh, the, the new thing now is they got to have music. Yeah. And so they're blasting, you know, some cool, you know, music. And I kind of like that. And so I work with the music guy and generally I, I've done a mic check even the day before and I'll explain to him, Hey, I love the music, you know, and so forth. But when we get in that last, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, that's when it kind of gets serious. We want to do the behalf ofs and welcome. And so you make a note of who is, who is important in that area. Uh, for example, if I'm a Louisville, and if it's their invitational, they have the Louisville Sports Commission. The host school might be you know, Bellarmine University or the University of Louisville, uh, uh -huh. St. Indiana State. And then it, it helps and behooves you if you spend a little time on that website and maybe find the president of the university's name and, you know, on behalf of, you know, President uh, you know, Smith or whomever, we welcome you, you know, to, and all those things just gives you a, a, a homier, more welcoming feeling. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, you know, you have the safety announcements that, you know, always if the weather's inclement and, and, and we've all been in those situations, <laughs> it's kind of a call that, you know, you have to read from the script and say it exactly right because God made attorneys. And yeah. so you, you, you can't, you know, some things, you know, you've got to be very serious. And, and those are things, you know, you just kind of, you're not really a ringmaster, but in some ways you, you kind of, you know, you, you kind of set the tone for what's fun and so forth. Yeah. Um, and that, and I, I kind of talk to the fans in cross country. I have a little kind of fun thing that I say and, you know, talk about cross country fans are the, are the best fans on earth. You know, you don't sit in some parking lot or some seat eating nachos. You run around and enjoy the show. So I, it kind of compliments them because cross country fans do. It's, really fun to watch the wave of fans move around a course uh -huh. I do at, and I remind them I said you know you know you being the best fans on earth you know at no time do you cut across the path of a runner or so forth make sure if you have your your your, your dog or a child on a leash that you hang <laughs> on to them. <laughs> and you see it nice and in a loving yeah. way but in a way saying you know and, and and oftentimes I'll say we'll be nice to you the first time but don't be, you know, don't jump the fences. Don't do things that, you know, and we all see it at meets. You yeah. Know, that the out of control fan and stuff like that. So hopefully if you say it in a nice positive way saying, Hey, you know, it's the race that's important. You know, I know you're painted up and you're ready to have fun and run around and cheer for your kids, but let's, let's don't, you know, cheer for your kid and then step in front of somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody gets it early. And you know, once you say that once and it's kind of fun, and, and people just feel so welcome. Then your mind and go buy the T-shirt over at the, you know, the tent, and and life's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's awesome. It's uh, you know, I I think uh, think back to, to the first uh, conference meet I did. I did the uh, um, the West Coast Conference uh, meet in the Spokane, and you know. I mean, I, I've done uh, little meets, but uh, I, I'd never done. I I had uh, never done a uh, conference meet, and so you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the things that uh, you guys uh, said, I I kind of kind of took, and you know, just uh, started going over the teams: uh, Portland, BYU, uh, you know, who their top who their top runner is, who their their coaches uh, and 
uh, one one of the things that uh, I I did at the uh, technical meeting the night before, I asked specifically each each coach uh, what uniform you know what color uniform they're they're wearing because you know as you guys well know everybody has an alternate uniform nowadays you know like uh, you know uh, I know like. You know, Iowa has has a black uniform, and I'm sure they have a gold uniform, and I'm sure they have a white. Uh, and you know, Iowa may be black and gold, but you have, you know, you have no idea until they what they're going to wear until they actually show up on the line. So you know, it's like uh, definitely, definitely, uh, you uniform uh tops and bottoms are all, always a good thing to uh to let the fans know because uh you know the uh fans might be expecting them to wear one uniform and uh they they show up uh wearing a, a different color uniform and you know uh i i I've, I've gotten burned on on that before so uh <laughs> And it's yeah. not always what you think are the school colors either. They don't. Some yeah. it seems yeah. like that some of them the uniforms are just like what were their school colors? You know, they're not in the uniform. So right. Yeah. And October being Breast Cancer Aware Month, yeah. uh, Awareness Month, you see a lot of pink in, yep. in cross country, and you think Michigan. That's why they have pink on. And then oh well, duh. And and um, so it's hard to pull that maize and blue out of a pink uniform. So. You are correct, and I've been burned on uniforms before, um, and, and in cross country, and even in track. I have a spot. Yeah. Of the, the track not so bad because I've got some binoculars I can I can see DNA with. They're really good. Yeah. Um, in cross country, if I've got a spot of the, and, and they're for working the radios, they got the guy out at the mile mark. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I try to have a little spotters meeting. I said, you know, hey, don't give me the the first thirty people. Just give me the, if they're all in a group, you know, they're coming along like a, you know, a flock of geese, give me the first three or four. And the first thing I want to know is school and then bib number. Yeah. You know, what school? Well, and, and they said, you're going to have to look at their uniforms real quick. You're closer to them than I am because I'm stuck in, you know, up on a crane somewhere or uh, wherever they, you know, perch the announcer. Yeah. But uh, that the, the uniforms is, is kind of nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I know that uh, at last year's uh, Pac-12 meet in uh, Tucson, uh, on what, you know, one of the days, USC had pink uniforms. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, sure. it's, so it, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, for, for, sure. oh, uh, it was a mother, it was Mother's Day weekend, that's, mm -hmm. That's why they wore pink because it was yeah. Mother's Day weekend. Right. So, uh, all right. As as we uh, wrap wrap up uh, this episode, uh, I gentlemen, I'd like to thank uh, both of you for uh, taking the time to uh, talk about your craft. Uh, once again, folks, as a reminder, uh, all of our previous editions of a conversation with are available on the site or on our YouTube page. Don't forget that if you have any comments, uh, you can leave them by uh, clicking on the post a comment link on the bottom of the page on or on our YouTube page. Uh, th thank you uh, once again to uh, Mike J and Dennis McNulty for, for coming on, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thank you.